Hi, this is Matt Swartz, and welcome to episode 25. Wow, episode 25. I'm here in Discovery Park in Gilbert, Arizona, because I'm still not allowed to really travel anywhere during this. Uh, But I actually realized last week, while I was on my hike, that I did a different topic on self-leadership when I was supposed to do on top hacks for working remote. And so I wanted to dive into those today of what are some of the top things I've learned about creating the best environment for working remote. Um, Many of you have found yourself in that situation where remote is now your new normal. And that just feels weird and trying to find a new rhythm with that. So I want to throw out this thought first off. Uh, Part of stepping into learning how to work remote is understanding that we are not as efficient in an office as we think we are. The reality is is that research and studies have told us that there is a lot of wasted time and interruptions that come from working with an office. And so my first hack for working from home is maybe reorientate yourself to actually how effective and how efficient you were actually working in an office. Because I think as we begin to understand that working in an office actually is not always conducive for everyone. Number one, my best uh, working at home hack is creating a a weekly idea of what I want to accomplish that week. A, A daily schedule working at home is probably less important for me. Uh... Most of my schedule was dominated in an office by meetings that I had no option but to be at. And I think working at home taught me that I really only have meetings that I set up or that I begin to really create into my workflow because I needed to think in terms of what would I consider getting done this week to make it a win. And so kind of that weekly, so for me, a Sunday night or Monday morning is when I create my workflow for the week of what I want to get accomplished. So it just takes time to understand that just because you have more productive capacity doesn't mean that you're going to reach all that productive potential, which leads to the other thing as far as um, when you're working at home, you need to understand what type of person are you. So for me, understanding that I need different environments for different types of work. Uh, If I'm in a writing mode, there's a certain place that I probably am sitting and working on on writing. If I'm creating content, different place. If I'm doing emails, different place. If I'm editing video. For me, understanding that having different environments I use for different things actually helped to kind of wire my brain to understand that this is what I'm doing now. Understand your schedule, workflow for the week, understand environments, but here's the third thing. Understanding what is my most effective times of day for work. My morning routine is critical for me, and that's not work time. Um, And so for me, I take that time for me, for, for my journaling, for my time with Jesus, my personal development, before I start tackling what just other people need me to get done. I think one of the biggest mistakes is understanding that I'm okay working into the evening. I have a wife that has a a piano business that her lessons go in the evening and I would rather just be working while she's working. So I have the ability to create that workflow for me, but I need to make sure I have my time. That's for me in the morning. That's my personal development time for me. But then I also need that time to knock out what I consider the most important stuff first before I start working on other people's things. Hey, you probably have some work at home hacks that are great for you as well. Go ahead and comment down below what those are. Like this video, subscribe, and let's continue going on the journey. Next week, I get to talk about how you get to find a new passport when your passport gets stolen in a foreign country. See you next week.